Hey everyone, it's Ed. Welcome to another edition of Lessons from My Mentor. This one goes primarily to two. One would be my mentor, and now I'm digging in my brain, 95, the COO of Parkview Episcopal Medical Center, David Johnson, and then also Kevin Roberts fast forward into University Hospital around 2003, if I get the year right. So it's pretty close to that. But anyways, this is really due to wisdom they both imparted to me, and I'm going to impart to you. What to do when you are tagged with an interim title within your organization. I'm not talking about someone who's brought from the outside as an interim to hold things together while that search is going on. I'm talking about when it's more than likely a situation when the CIO, someone leaves. So maybe it's a VP. I'll just speak from a CIO perspective. CIO leaves, you're a direct report to the CIO, and they ask you to serve in an interim role. What to do? Now, I come from a radical sort of point of view on this. So if you want to be holding things steady and take your chances, go for it. That's the safe way. Organization trusts you, they know you, and they're like, Ed, be your interim. And we're going to look for someone, could be you, we'll include you, but we're definitely looking for someone to become the CIO. Now, again, safe, which is what most people do, is they just keep things steady. But I'm telling you that my experience has been, and the counsel I've given to others who have listened and applied this and also therefore became CIO, is to own it as if you're the permanent CIO. Do not hold things steady. You see, if they want steady, if they were super, super happy with the person before you, and maybe, you know, it depends on why did they leave? Were they sort of nudged out, forced out, or fired? Then they certainly don't want the remnants of the past. You have to be different. If they love that person, that person just happened to move on or retire, I think they're still looking for something different. They're like, yeah, we appreciated that. We respect that. It took us to here, but now the organization, we're trying to go here. So we need new leadership. And I'm telling you, as much as you think everyone loves you, and they probably do, they are looking for something different. They don't want the same thing that they had in 90% of the situations. Don't think yours is that 10%, because that's a fallback by me giving a percentage. You'll be like, hmm, well, I'm probably in that 10%. So I'm actually going hold things steady. People hold things steady because they're scared. They have a fear. And so I think you need to break that fear, especially if you want to be true to yourself and the calling on your life and on your career. So a couple of things that I would recommend. Number one, I already said it. Do not keep things steady. It's boring. And it's probably not you. You were a good steward. You were following your leader. You were reporting to the CIO and you did whatever she or he asked you to do. And you were part of that team. But I'm sure in the back of your mind, you thought many times, hmm, I would do things a little bit differently. I'm learning a lot. This is great. I would try this. I would do this a little differently. Be who you are. So don't keep things steady. That's number one. Number two, you got to make your mark. You've got six months, right? Probably most searches take about six months. It takes a long time. Make your mark. Do something. Be different. So let's assume that they're not all that interested in you. Because they already know you. They're like, oh, that's Ed. Yeah, we kind of know what Ed's like. We're kind of looking for someone new. And so, hey, trust me, the people that come in for an interview and they only spend one hour with them, maybe up to 10 hours, right? They come back a second time for a full day. Maybe they spend 20 hours. That person guaranteed, well, not guaranteed, but high likelihood, they are way more excited than you. Because they know you. You are routine. They have someone that comes in and they only get to see them for a few hours. And it's like, wow, this is exciting. This is amazing. This person's going to like recreate the world. 
That's what you're up against. You're not up against status quo, keeping things steady. You're up against someone who's coming in who really, really wants that job and is going to be a pretty exciting candidate. They're going to be well coached by the recruiter. They're probably going to be well researched and they're probably going to come in with a lot of ideas that maybe if you're keeping things status quo, you're not going to do. So do not do status quo and make your mark. Find some things to do. Third, related to the last one, is act as if you want it. Do not introduce yourself as the interim CIO. Hey, everyone. My name's Ed. I'm an interim CIO. No, you are the CIO. Are you or are you not in that role? So own it that way. I've seen people be interim CIO for over a year, which I think is wrong in many, many different ways. But it's like, no, you own it. You're the CIO. Just make it happen. Make your mark. Differentiate. And then here's the final thing. I, I know a lot of you know sort of my origin story to becoming CIO of a big health system. Is go ask for the job. Because your organization, and they're, they're probably going to have some responsibility to do some of what I'm about to say, but they're going to go through this huge, expensive process. And I love recruiters. I really do. They're going to hire a recruiter. And recruiters are awesome. Search firms are awesome. I say nothing negative about them. I think they're super important. So that being said... Ask for the job because it's going to take a long time. Search firm, a few months, kind of like learn the culture, learn the people, what are they really looking for? A couple months to find candidates and vet candidates, you know, a couple months to schedule time for everyone's calendars to make it out, interviews, and then a month to let the client respond. You know, these things take minimum of six months, if not a year. So, in some cases, you you definitely have to go through some sort of process, right? To make sure everything is fair and equitable. I get that. I think it's that's important. As you're going through this process, you need to just ask for the job. So I think you know my story. They did exactly what I'm telling you. They went to a recruitment firm. I knew I saw all the people come through because I was assigned to help them be successful. And I was glad to do it. You know, that I would meet all the candidates. I sort of like give them some insights and help them. And it, that's when I had my epiphany, somewhat arrogantly prideful, but at the same time, hopeful, sort of, you could call it, had some vision, gave me some passion. And I was like, man, I don't have the experience they do. So there was no way, right? I was, I was much younger, did not have the experience. was not a CIO previously, like of a big academic medical center. So I knew that, but... I also felt at the same time, I had the vision for the organization. I'd been part of this organization. I knew what it needed. I knew what needed to change. And so I knew I had to raise my hand and say, geez, I know I'm interim and thank you, but I am the CIO. It just takes boldness. And a lot of people are oh, that's so arrogant stuff. Yeah, there was probably some of that. But, I, but really, as I look back at it, it was very little because I was scared more than I was arrogant. I was fearful more than I was prideful. But in my heart, I knew that was the job for me or this was the career path for me. And it's like, what do I have to lose? Really, if they're going to hire me as CIO, me ask for the job, there's no loss there. They're going to ask me anyways. If I don't ask and they bring in someone else, I lost my opportunity. So when I'm saying ask for the job, I'm not saying passively, like go through the process and, you know, be a good student, I'm saying go in there and ask for it. And that's what I did, right? So I helped all these people. I thought to myself, hmm, I think I could do this job. I knew I wasn't going to, when they matched me up, I, there was no way. They, you know, they're doing a matrix on everyone. And it's like, hey, did this person have experience? No. So it wasn't going to work. It wasn't going to happen. So I had nothing to lose. So I went in there and knocked on the door to the CEO and I just said, hey, you can stop your search. I think you need to do something bold, not disrespectful or anything like that. But think about it. If you're in that role as the CEO, or if, let's say you're a CIO and you've got an interim VIP. And if someone came up to you with all earnest and 
they were a good egg to begin with. And they said to you, hey, Joe, hey, Sherry, I know the search is really important. We've got to get the right person in the role. And I've done a lot of self-evaluation and I want this job. I think it's meant for me. How could you not at least respect that individual? Even if you're not going to, even if you're in your mind, you're like, are you kidding me? Are you crazy? How could you not at least respect that individual for giving a shot? And, and so that's what you got to do. So if you're in an interim role, don't be passive. Don't wait it out. Make your mark. Don't hold things steady. Have differentiation. Share the vision that you have. Share the passion you have and ultimately ask for the job. You got nothing to lose.